state and explain the relationship. Oh, I feel like Dr. Phil, the kind of chemistry relationship guy here. Anyway, let's draw out a graph. Uh, on the X axis is temperature. And on the Y axis is this mysterious vapor pressure, which we'll have in kilopascals. And we're going to measure that up to at least 100 or 101, depending on which textbook you use. And 100 or 101 is atmospheric pressure. And if you remember, when the vapor pressure of the chemical equals atmospheric pressure, it will boil. Normally, the IB puts three lines on these sort of graphs. And I've drawn in a blue line there to show atmospheric pressure. The three chemicals are water, sulfur dichloride, and C5. That's going to be pentane. As a quick refresher, uh, hydrogen bonds are stronger than dipole. Dipole are stronger than van der Waals. So water, that has hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. The little green dash there. Now that's a special sort of dipole. Why is it special? It's special because it's stronger. Sulfur dichloride, well that molecule also has a dipole and the interaction between one and another of the molecules is dipole-dipole but that's weaker than hydrogen bonding. So that explains why it boils at a lower temperature. The bonds between them are weaker than water and so less temperature is needed to turn it into a vapour. And finally, uh, I'm going to draw out propane-like little sausages there and in between them is where the van der Waals bonding occurs. And that's the weakest of the three sorts of intermolecular forces. Doesn't take much to break that. So to recap, uh, water, well that boils at 100 degrees, strong intermolecular forces. Sulfur dichloride is 59 and pentane is 36 degrees, the weakest. So looking at this different graph, uh, which chemical has the highest boiling point? Let's just see when the vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure. So the boiling point of the purple line is 22 degrees C and of the green line, 67 degrees C. So the chemical with the highest boiling point is the green one. That must have the highest intermolecular forces. It takes the highest temperature to vaporize it to such a pressure that it becomes atmospheric pressure. Why is, uh, why is the chemical responsible for the purple line a gas at 298 Kelvin? Well, we just discovered that it boiled at 22 degrees C. But at 298 Kelvin, the vapor pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure, so it's going to be a gas. When it equals atmospheric pressure, it's boiling, so if it's greater, it's going to be a gas. And the final question is drawing a white line for a chemical with a greater intermolecular force than the other chemicals. A greater intermolecular force means it's going to take a higher temperature to boil it. So when it hits 101, it must be at a higher temperature. You've got to maintain that curvy shape. So let's talk about the heat of vaporization. There's the equation showing the vaporization of the three chemicals. And the heat of vaporization, that's the energy change, or energy required, when one mole of gas is made from one mole of liquid. So water that has the strongest intermolecular forces, you need lots of energy to break those bonds and that means it has a high temperature compared to the others when it boils. So the vaporization is gonna be big. You need a lot of energy to break those strong bonds to vaporize it. And uh, pentane, well, that has the weakest intermolecular forces. So that doesn't need much energy at all to break them apart. It was only van der Waals, wasn't it? So the heat of vaporization is the lowest. 